The APU Hydraulic Start System The hydraulic accumulator in the aft midsection cabin ceiling provides the hydraulic pressure used to drive the APU starter. A hydraulic accumulator is a pressure storage device in which non-compressible hydraulic fluid is held under pressure by compressed gas, or nitrogen. So it's going to take a combination of nitrogen and hydraulic pressure to start the APU. In order to start the APU, we need a combination that's going to reach 3000 PSI. We'll get into how much nitrogen needs to be precharged because it depends on ambient temperature. When subjected to an applied force, a gas acts in a manner similar to a spring. It yields but pushes back with as much force as is being applied to it. This characteristic is applied to hold a hydraulic charge in the APU accumulator. The accumulator consists of a gas chamber, a reservoir, and a hydraulic pressure chamber. The nitrogen forces hydraulic fluid from the pressure chamber through a pressure line connected to the start valve and starter. Nitrogen quantity is measured by a pressure gauge in the cabin overhead near the hand pump. The accumulator piston is connected to a tape position indicator that is marked in percent of hydraulic charge. When the tape position indicator is at 100%, the pressure chamber is fully charged. When the tape position indicator is at 0%, the accumulator is empty and needs recharging. When the APU switch is turned on, the ESU sends a start command to the APU hydraulic start valve. The valve opens, releases the accumulator's hydraulic charge, which spins the APU start motor that rotates the APU compressor and fuel pump. The electrically driven backup pump on the left forward deck within the main rotor pylon automatically recharges the depleted hydraulic accumulator for the next APU start. The backup hydraulic pump switch on the miscellaneous switch panel controls backup hydraulic pump operation. The electrical power generated by the APU generator can operate the backup hydraulic pump to recharge the APU accumulator. When the APU is started, the accumulator hydraulic fluid charge is depleted. The accumulator pressure switch sends a signal to turn off the ACC low capsule on the upper console and the legend on the pilots and co-pilots inboard MB MFDs. When this happens, the backup pump will automatically come up to recharge the accumulator even if the backup pump switch is in the off position. The hand pump enables accumulator recharging if backup hydraulic pump operation is not possible. The hand pump is a short stroke type with a removable handle. The winterization kit consists of an additional accumulator identical to the accumulator already installed and a time delay relay for the APU start motor. The kit provides easier cold weather starting between negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The time delay relay allows the backup hydraulic pump to charge the accumulators for an additional 90 seconds, making the total run time of 180 seconds when the kit is installed. So now that we understand how the accumulator operates, how much do we have to service it? When you go to the IETM and you look up the service the APU accumulator, they'll have tasks to where we get to the part for opening the nitrogen port and filling it up with the gas. Generally, you're going to start with a thousand PSI. But when you get to this note, the following 1450 PSI pressure and tape reading is based off of a 70 degree Fahrenheit temperature day. It says to use the graph B temperature precharge pressure chart for correct pressure. This is where ambient temperature is going to play a part in how much nitrogen needs to be in the accumulator. When we look at the chart, the bottom shows the ambient temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. It goes from negative 25 all the way to 175. On the left, you have your pre-charge pressure and PSI, starting from 1100 all the way to 1700. When we look at a 50 degree Fahrenheit day, you'll follow it up to the slanted line and read to the left to obtain your pressure. Here, it shows that a 50 degree Fahrenheit day, we should be at, at roughly 1390 PSI on the nitrogen side. This is going to show your tape indicator reading in percentage. When we look at that tape reader on the side for how much pressure that we should have, on that same 50 degree Fahrenheit day, the minimum reading should be at 66%. The tape reading should be at 66%. That's just the minimum though. Your optimum reading is going to show that you should have 78% at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And here at your maximum reading, it shows that at 50 degrees and your nitrogen level being at that same requirement for the 50 degrees, 
that your maximum reading on the tape reading should be at 89%. APU controls. The APU controls are in the cockpit on the upper console. The controls consist of an APU control switch and an APU fire detector fuel shutoff selector T-handle. Indicator lights on the upper console and the pilot's and co-pilot's inboard displays permit cockpit monitoring of the APU system. The electrically controlled and hydraulically started APU runs up to its rated speed automatically. Sequencing and shutdown for a system failure are controlled by the ESU. Upper console capsules are APU on is a green status light indicating the APU is operating. APU fail is a yellow caution light indicating the APU failure. ACC low, yellow caution light indicating the accumulator hydraulic pressure is low. Oil hot, yellow caution light indicating APU oil is hot. Each of the cold start indicators has a corresponding legend that appears on the ECAS displays on the pilot and co-pilot's inboard MFDs. The purpose of the cold start indicators is to give the pilot status indications during APU start before AC power has been applied to the aircraft and MFDs have been turned on. The APU fail caution will appear and the APU fail capsule on the upper console illuminate any time the APU automatically shuts down. The APU oil hot caution appears and the oil hot capsule on the upper console will illuminate when APU oil temperature is above normal range. During ground operations at high ambient temperatures, the APU oil hot caution may appear and the oil hot capsule may illuminate. If this occurs, the APU should be shut down immediately to prevent damage because the ESU will not automatically shut the APU down for this condition. After a 30 minute cooling period, the oil level should be checked. If OK, the APU may be restarted. Setting the APU control switch to on opens a hydraulic start valve to release the accumulator hydraulic charge to the APU starter and initiates the start sequence. When the fire detector sensor detects a fire in the APU compartment, the APU T handle and master warning panel fire capsules will go on red. The pilot can then pull the APU fire extinguishing T handle. This does several things provides an APU stop command to the ESU, shuts off the prime boost pump if it is running, de-energizes the APU fuel, fuel shutoff valve.